this, and I'm going to try to avoid getting any of my personal biases, either pro or against uh, uh, FDA's uh, position uh, with regards to this. Um, this briefing, however, does address the FDA's draft guidance uh, issued on October 3rd. Um, and in its framework, uh, the FDA defines an LDT as an IVD that's intended for clinical use and designed manufactured uh, for use within a single uh, laboratory. Um, the agency has suggested that increased uh, um, oversight is appropriate as LDTs are highly complex. Uh, they're manufactured, uh, they're used to screen for common diseases, and are uh, widely distributed, uh, and hence may have a significant public health effect. The FDA asserts that the clinical laboratory improvement amendments under which uh, laboratories operate uh, do not provide for pre-market review or ensure clinical validity, uh, nor the removal of unsafe LDTs from the market, and thus they believe that uh, um, the CLIO process, uh, which is administered through the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, uh, is not adequate for public health uh, perspectives. And hence, the to address these perceived deficiencies, the FDA announcement proposes to require that laboratories uh, provide the agency information about laboratory developed tests that are currently on the market, notify the FDA of new or significantly modified laboratory developed tests uh, before clinical use. They intend uh, to begin pre-market review of laboratory developed tests using a risk-based approach um, that depends in part on the participation of advisory panels. It will begin by focusing on uh, LDTs that have the same intended use as an approved FDA class three laboratory device. Um, that is one that they consider to be high risk. Um, and they will uh, continue to focus uh, heavily on LDTs used in direct consumer marketing. Reactions to the FDA's notice have been mixed. Um, the Association for Molecular Pathology has reaffirmed its position that federal regulatory oversight for most LDTs should remain with the clinical laboratory improvement amendments, uh, the CMS process, uh, although that process could be improved. Today we're joined by three uh, really distinguished molecular um, pathology professionals from a variety of clinical laboratory settings uh, with an interest in framing up a discussion regarding the development of uh, laboratory developed tests in their laboratories that are using clinical care. In addition, they'll share their current understanding of how the FDA draft framework could impact uh, the patients that they serve. Following uh, remarks from each of the panelists, we'll move to an open and uh, question and answer period. Um, the three panelists uh, who I'll first introduce uh, uh, together and then uh, one by one for their comments will be Dr. Elaine Lyon. She is currently president of the Association for Molecular Pathology and medical director of the genetics division and co-medical director of pharmacogenomics at the AROP Laboratories, as well as associate professor of pathology at the University of Utah School of Medicine in in Salt Lake City. Uh, Dr. Aaron Bossler, who's chair of the AMP uh, Association for Molecular Pathology Economic Affairs Committee and directs the Molecular Pathology Laboratory at the University of Iowa Carver uh, College of Medicine in Iowa City. He's also associate professor of pathology there. And then finally, Dr. Janino uh, Longtime, uh, he's, she's the AMP president-elect, vice chair of molecular pathology and genetics, and professor of pathology at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City.